Welcome to another episode of What's Working in E-Commerce. I'm your host, Egan Heath from Caravan Digital. We're a digital marketing agency for direct-to-consumer e-commerce brands. Today, I have the privilege to be speaking with Lauren Schwartz from The Loft 325. Lauren is an expert in creative ad strategies. Welcome, Lauren. Thank you for having me. Right on. So tell us a bit about um, how you got into this and just sort of what you guys do. Yeah, so I have been in the e-commerce space for um, over 16 years and I first started obviously just on the landing page and email marketing side. Um, so really focused on, you know, how, you know, basically people like obviously view your website and like all of that, you know, that sort of like front facing and then really started working on email marketing and I started working at an agency and just kind of fell in love with um, the consumer side of ads um, and kind of like the behavioral shopping that people do when they're scrolling through these social platforms. Um, and I saw that like as I was at the creative um, agency that there wasn't a huge um I guess like a huge push for creative for ads. It was mostly media buying at the time and, um, you know, focused on how you buy in the account. And I just kind of saw the need for more creative and more creative strategies. So decided to branch off and start my own um, creative studio. This will be obvious to most people watching and listening, but just walk us through, you know, like why is creative so important when it comes to paid social? <music> Again, I think this has kind of been like, it's funny, there's been so many things like, you know, with, with paid social, it goes up and down with like media buying and obviously creative, but I think people are just, you know, they're finally starting to realize that people need to understand creative and they need, that's the first thing they see. I mean, as you're scrolling through social media, um, you know, it's not necessarily the copy that you're looking at, it's what is actually in front of you. And people's attention spans are so short that making something with like a really fast hook or, you know, something that's going to grab your attention is, is always the creative. And so I think that's why, you know, as we've kind of moved in past like iOS 14 updates, um, creative has just been such a huge push for a lot of uh, D2C brands. I'm curious. When you start with a client, let's say you're starting on a new account, how do you approach it and how do you think about the strategy for the creative? So the first thing I do is I really like to kind of go back to where they started. So, you know, again, obviously iOS update, everyone has been having, <laughs> you know, so many issues on Facebook and Instagram. And so I really kind of like to go back through the data, go back through their creative assets and what they have, um, you know, started with and kind of where they are now and really just do like a deep dive of who their customer actually is. I think, you know, a lot of people uh, pre iOS update, it was really easy to kind of throw things into the account and have things work where I think, you know, post iOS update, it's really understanding who is actually purchasing the item or who your customer actually is. So really understanding your consumer and what really drives them, I think is a huge benefit to really understand because I think people think they know who they're talking to, but really it, it, they, it may not be that person. So really kind of doing a deep dive of who their actual buyer is and consumer is, and then you know, strategizing on ways of how to speak to those individuals through creative. Yeah. Is there a process you follow there or particular things you do to dig in and figure out who the customer really is? Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's, it's a lot of research. Um, I, you know, again, go back through all of their data, um, go through the ad account, look at their creative assets, look at their copy, um, and really, you know, just kind of go on different kind of platforms. Um, you know, I, I like to use SparkToro as one of them, is just one to just kind of dive into um, some customer insights, um, go through Google. I mean, really like, it's just a, a huge deep dive of like the research that goes behind it. Um, it usually takes me like a week or two to just really like fine tune like who I think their audience is and then um, kind of presenting that to them um, before we kind of get started. Yeah, one thing it's, I really want to ask you about there, Lauren, is, you know, we, we run paid social for clients and we understand the importance of this kind of upfront foundational work. And many of our clients don't initially. And so I'm curious if you found anything, any way to say, hey, let's slow the train here. 
let's not think we're going to get ads up tomorrow. Like this is going to be a process. Let's do it right. Let's do our research. How do you talk with your clients about that so they understand the importance of these upfront steps? Yeah, I mean, before a client, you know, initially signs with me, I mean, that's kind of the biggest thing that I let them know at first is that I need to understand where you guys have been in order for me to continue to push forward. You know, a lot of people or a lot of clients, sorry, come to me and they want to either scale their account or they're looking for new ideas and new iterations. But, you know, I think clients sometimes forget that even though a trend is working or, you know, something is working for their competitor doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work for them. And so I think it's just kind of, you know, taking that step back and just really letting them know, like, look, like we have to do this research in order to like, make sure that you're going to, going to get the, you know, the push and the scale that you actually want, as opposed to just testing it out and then hopefully hoping that it works. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, I'm a big fan of direct response marketing and copywriting and kind of all the, the classics of direct response advertising. And that's something basically everyone emphasizes is to write good headlines, to write good bullet points, to write good ad copy. Um, you have to deeply, deeply understand not just the product, but the people buying it and specifically why they buy it and what concerns they have about it and what else they've tried and so on and so forth. So it makes sense when you're making videos and, you know, visual ad creative, it would be the same way. Yeah, for sure. I mean, again, like I think there's there's different kind of like approaches for each of it. Um, you know, sometimes it's just people want that kind of like, you know, um, like hooky style, like creative, which again, like that could work. But, you know, you're again, you're only going to get them in. But if you don't actually like explain what you're talking about, then you're going to lose them, you know, throughout the video. So it's it definitely does. You know, there is a lot of thought that goes into creating these videos to make them understand, you know, what what it is you're selling and what how it's going to benefit their life. That's all. But one thing I'm curious about in the industry, since you've been around a good while is, when was there this bifurcation where we've got an ad buyer over here and we've got a creative agency over here? And for us, you know, it's like we're, uh, Caroline from my team is really strong with the paid social running the ads, but we often, we lean on our clients for the creative and often it's not there. And so we're kind of looking for, you know, partners like you to do things like this. I'm just sort of curious, when did this happen where th these were two different jobs? I mean, I think like with creative, so for creative strategy, let's say, um, I think a lot of media buyers have unfortunately had to be pushed into the creative strategy side of things. Whereas, you know, media buyers, like it's one of the, it's like the old, the old saying where it's like, do like hire people that do what they do best. And so like, obviously media buyers, like, yes, they can have that creative side to them and that creative understanding, but Again, like as someone who, like I'm a designer by trade, so I've, you know, been designing in the industry for a really long time. So getting into the sort of strategy side of things, like you kind of have to shift a little bit, but at the end of the day, it's like understanding like how design and how to speak to designers, um, I think is super important. And I think when you have like actual creatives and creative strategists working together with the media buyers, like they have to go hand in hand, you know, I mean, we get a lot of our data from the media buyers, but then at the same time, like we can kind of educate the media buyers on the creative and like creative trends and how we think we could swap some things around. Whereas like the media buyers giving us data on, you know, um, like click through rate, you know, thumb stop rate, all of that kind of information. So I think, like they could be separate, but they definitely have to work together. I don't necessarily think that they're, you know, complete, completely their own entity. In most of your engagements, are you guys working with an e-commerce brand and they have an ad buyer agency and then they're working with you guys on the creative? Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I would be, I would, and maybe this is old school. Like, has it been that way quite a while now? I think recently there's just been kind of like that uptick in it. Um, again, because I think you know, media buyers are really good at media buying. And I think creatives are really good at creative. And so just kind of letting people stay within their lane and making sure that you're working together. I think it, it just, it makes for such more like impactful ads when you have people who are designated to direct response creative and understand it and can execute on it. And then making sure that the media buyers are providing that information for the creatives. 
Yeah, and to your point, some of these iOS updates have made it even harder to just drive performance without strong creative. So the need is stronger than ever. That's one of the main levers we pull, and so it needs to be good. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, you mentioned the thumb stopping metric. I'm curious, what does it take to make a thumb stopping ad? Can you talk to us about the hook? Can you talk to us sort of about how you approach that? So as people scrolling through their social media feeds will actually stop and watch these ads. Yeah, I, it's funny because I, I like to think of like the thumb stop rate um, or thumb stop hook is kind of like... Um, kind of like, and this is like an old, obviously marketing way to think about things. But like when you go to like a grocery store, let's say, I think the best like creatives or best, um, forms of like things to, to get you to, to drive into it are kind of like those like national Enquirer, like I want to say not like trashy magazines, but like kind of like they understand how to get people to stop and look at what they're talking about in such a clear way. And so I kind of like to think of it that way as like pulling it back of like, okay, I'm standing in a supermarket, like how am I going to get it to stop? Like, I think that's why a lot of these kind of, um, you know, we had a, a brand that we worked with uh, for skincare where it was like a super close, dry, flaky skin, you know, and it, it's just kind of like, as you're scrolling through your feed, like it disrupts you in the feed because you're so used to looking at like, oh, these pretty pictures and whatnot. And then you have like this dry, flaky skin that's like in your face. So I think it's just like understanding again, like who your customer is and how can you make these sort of like interesting hooks that again, can really just kind of like, whoa, like disrupt their feed. Like that's what you want to do. You want to, you don't want to blend in, you want to disrupt. And so Again, I think it's just thinking about those kind of things to get you to like, you know, focus on what you're what you're looking at. Yeah, that's a great example. The tabloids were sort of the original clickbait, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> those magazines also come up in direct response copywriting books right from the can. And so that's that's absolutely fascinating. Um, are there some examples you can show us and kind of talk us through, you know, what you and your team are doing as you as you created these and how you think about them? Uh, yeah, so this is, um, I'll just kind of talk through this one before I, you know, speak about it. Um, this uh -huh. is for one of the clients I used to work with, uh, Outer Furniture. And obviously, like, we, for them, like, we really wanted to have that thumb stop rate. Um, and this is, you know, very clearly a white, a very nice white uh, outdoor piece of furniture, and she's spilling coffee on it. So it was one <laughs> of those things where we really wanted to, like, drive people to uh -huh. be like, oh, my gosh, like, what is happening in this video? Um, uh -huh. and so this was just one that we kind of did with, with just this, uh -huh. you know, showing that you can actually clean it off really easily. Um, you know, just, I think the whole like pilling, you know, spilling coffee <laughs> on <laughs> the furniture was just like such a great way to like get people to uh -huh. stop in the feed. Um, for the listeners, it says black coffee doesn't stain this white couch. And there's a big sign, OMG, and there's coffee over the couch. Like you said, sorry, go ahead. I just wanted to call it out. Yeah, no, awesome. no, no. <laughs> yeah, but literally like this was like the thumbnail. So again, like uh -huh. as you're scrolling through, um, you know, uh, and I think that's actually to, to go back to the thumbnail. I think that's mm -hmm. something else that people should obviously always recommend as well is testing different thumbnails. Um, mm -hmm. Because sometimes if you have a different clip, you can, you know, create a different thumbnail to at least, at least get people to stop. And then, you know, once they scroll over, it'll autoplay. So like testing different thumbnails too, is always a great way to kind of test, um, you know, different creatives as well. Uh huh. This is, um, this one is just so fun. Do you guys, are you guys checking out a lot of TikTok organic content? Are you spending a lot of time on the platform just so you kind of know what plays? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I work with, um, you know, again, we work with, uh, you know, different brands and I am always continuously scrolling through TikTok and just seeing what the trends are, um, you know, what people are, are talking about, what music is playing, um, you know, a big trend. I'll, I'll go through this one. This was a big trend. Um, and I think still is, you know, could still work is it's the whole sticky note, um, trend. Mm, so basically okay. what it is, is you write out your copy on sticky notes and basically just, it's kind of like a, a POV perspective where no one's talking, um, you're showing the product, but you're also just making it very kind of organic looking by having these different sticky notes. Um, mm -hmm. so I think again, like this is a, a was a really big trend on TikTok um, that can uh -huh. obviously be translated over. So, oops. There we go. There we go. 
Stop using the wrong harness. Oh, this is like for a dog. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All the colors, patterns fit. So we're showing the products. We've got little messages on bright post-its and they go right on the message. Okay. We've got a cute dog using one of these. Yeah. So th again, huh. like the first frame is stop using the wrong harness with this like bright mm -hmm. colored um, and then it puts it on the harness. And then it goes yeah. into, I'm so happy I found these Joyride harnesses. Um, again, these are just things that you can, you know, it's it's very native looking, you know, just people mm. walking and having these kind of post-it notes. But like, again, a different element as opposed to always looking at this, you know, just text overlay on a video. Now you have something different, which is a post-it, which is, you know, again, it's like, oh, wait, what is this? Why is there a post-it in my feed? Um, so I think these are just different ways of kind of showing different, um, ways of creative. Yeah. You mentioned that, you know, the sound in the last one too, it's obvious that all of them can be watched without the sound. And I understand too, you know? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's like the other thing too, is, you know, depending on where you are, um, scrolling obviously most you know majority of people listen with sound off obviously if you're on a TikTok platform it's always it's mostly sound on so again mm -hmm. it's putting the creatives into the wherever you're putting your creative understanding who your customer is and how they're listening and consuming the content so that's why it's always really important to make sure that you're designing for those areas so that again it's speaking to the audience it's speaking to the consumer mm -hmm. I don't know if this is a dumb question, Lauren, but can you describe your process a bit or like what does your team do to create one of these? Are you scripting these out? Are you kind of improvising and cutting later? Like what is that process like? Yeah, so we, you know, again, we work with uh, content creators who work specifically with us. And for a lot of them, you know, they, we, we've been working with them for a while. So we can kind of give them a brief. Um, sometimes it's just bullet points of things that we want to touch on within the ad. And then we really want the talent to shine through. So we'll, you know, give them kind of these touch points of what they need to discuss, but then let them, you know, add in their own flair, add in their own um, personality so that, again, it, it still makes it look really organic. Um, because again, I think, the main thing is that, you know, consumers are getting smarter and they don't always want to be sold to. So I think making things very authentic looking is also really impactful. Um, so we do have scripts that we send out um, to some of our creators. Again, it just kind of depends on the client. You know, we have a, one of our clients who was mostly um, uh, it was a supplement company and we definitely needed to make sure that we couldn't have particular claims called out. So those were things that like we had to make sure that we, you know, let the creators know so that they weren't actually saying it when they were, you know, talking about the the product. Um, you know, we've, we've vetted a lot of different creators and what I've, what I've learned within the creative, you know, making UGC and creative, you know, universe is that there's so many different agencies that, you know, shoot UGC, but I think when you, you know, when you actually have people who specifically work with you, you can, you can kind of, you can train them to, to really get the content that you need. Um, for us on our side, obviously we're editing the ads as well. And so there's a lot of times when we'll get content from clients and they don't hit the points that we need them to talk about or it's, um, you know, a person just, you know, basically a talking head at you, um, which again, that can work sometimes too, but really making sure that we're getting a lot of B-roll from our creators is really important because as you're, you know, cutting these ads, making sure that you're showing the product, getting different hooks, having a voiceover, and then all these different shots, it just makes it so much easier for us on our side to cut these ads and make them, you know, very, um, you know, make him direct response. Hmm. Those are great. Wow. And I see most are well under a minute. Yeah, we definitely wanted to, um, this was more informational, but again, we still kind of wanted that hook where it was, you know, ditch the plastic. And then uh -huh. she has one of those, um, laundry detergent, um, oh, yeah. like balls, pods. And so, mm -hmm. um, she squeezes it and lets all the juice run out. So, 
again, <laughs> just like those different kind of hooks to kind of get you into it to be like, wait, why is this mm-hmm. happening? Um, and then again, showing how the product works. So yeah, it, and then again, like obviously we were talking about the plastic in the ocean. So mm-hmm. just again, trying to make those different shots. And so with something like this, you know, we definitely had to let them know, okay, these are the kind of shots we want because we wanted to actually show how the product dissolves. We wanted to show, um, you know, again, that kind of th- that hook. Like we, we definitely let her know like, hey, let's have a hook like this so that it makes it just more thumb stop worthy. And then we needed her to hit all the points of, you know, putting it in the laundry, just different shots. Like these are things as you're, as you're editing that are super important to have. Um, because a lot of times, you know, there's some creators that they just don't know what to shoot and they kind of just wing it. And I think that's where a lot of companies get frustrated in the, you know, getting the user generated content because they're not getting what they want. And so they think that, okay, I'm going to, you know, put this out there and send it to a creator. But if they don't give you the content that you want, then it really makes it hard to, you know, give them a winning ad. Huh? Yeah. So you guys just, again, maybe it's neither here nor there, but the no parabens, no, you know, all the text and things. Are you guys editing that and putting that all together or the creators handing you most of what we're seeing here, like how, what, what they're just giving you the raw files and you edit this together or how does that work? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they give us okay. the raw files and then we edit it together unless, um, we have some creators where we'll have them do like organic type stuff, like organic TikToks. Well, they'll, well, mm-hmm. they'll just, they'll edit it all in the platform and then I send see. us that footage. Wow. There's just, there's so much condensed into a couple seconds here. It's really fascinating, Lauren. And I think, again, yeah, there's like, you know, there's so many people where I think, you know, last year I remember, you know, talking about a lot of people and a lot with my clients and letting them know that they need to start investing in content creators. And the funny thing, it was just kind of like, okay, yeah, we've tested UGC, but it doesn't work. And then again, I think like, you know, 2022 hit and now UGC is blowing up everywhere. And, you know, I think with like the rise in TikTok ads and I think more people are understanding that user generated content is, you know, very crucial to the account. Um, But then again, I also let my clients know too, like always diversify your creatives. Like don't just throw all of the UGC in there. Make sure you're still having, you know, your branded pieces, your founder stories, statics. Um, You know, again, I don't think you should oversaturate your account with UGC because again, diversifying your creatives makes it so that you're still getting people to watch and understand what you're, what you're selling. Yeah, that's, that's great advice you know, what do you hear from the clients and from the ad buyers? You know, what kind of difference does this quality UGC make? I mean, you know, definitely it it makes a difference for sure. Um, I think again, like making sure that you're shooting that direct response creative is something that is really important. And then again, like having, having creators understand how to shoot is also really important. I think so many people just, you know, again, they, they kind of send it off into, you know, seeding product and whatnot, and then they get a lot of content back. But again, it's just not what they're looking for. And it's really hard to cut ads when you're just kind of getting, getting these things back. If we're talking with you know brand owners and things, or people are listening right now, where they're a little smaller, maybe they they can't quite invest in this yet and hire a firm like yours. Like, how do they do this themselves? What's you know what's a good process that let's say a smaller brand could start with? Yeah, I mean, I always say you know definitely make sure that you're you're nurturing your organic content. I think that's always something that's so big and that, you know, a lot of smaller brands, they think, oh, the only the only way I'm going to ever get recognized is if I, um, you know, I, I only have to make ads where I think, you know, right now with TikTok, you can get discovered so much faster than on Instagram and Facebook. And so I always kind of let people know, like, just nurture your organic audience, like start to understand who your audience is, start, you know, practicing different things, uh, different trends or, you know, different ways of talking to your audience, like through your social media platforms. I think those are always such great ways of like introducing the product, talking about the product and really like you can kind of see like what resonates with people. And then as you kind of start to grow and get more brand awareness, I think as you decide to, um, you know, start going into paid social, 
then you'll already kind of have an understanding of like what's resonating with people. And then you can kind of start to, you know, again, work with someone like, like our, our firm to really help you, you know, dive into it deeper. Yeah. And then for people who are ready to invest and, you know, can tell you guys are the experts on this, you know, like who's a, who's a good fit for you guys and where can they find you? Yeah. I mean, again, we work with all D to C brands. So, um, any e-commerce based brands, um, you know, definitely come and come and talk to us. <laughs> uh, you can find, um, us at the loft325.com and all of my social handles are at the loft325. So yeah, definitely, um, send me a message. Awesome. Lauren Schwartz, thank you for coming on to share what's working in e-commerce. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me again.